Thank you for checking out this clip of Black Man Spy. To watch the full episodes, get our newsletter, and more, please subscribe to our Substack feed called Special Intelligence at malcolmnance.substack.com. This week's Burn Bag of the Week is really exciting because I know this per oh wait I knew the person last week personally also I don't know what it is or what's in the water in the international legion that I served in in Ukraine but all the crazies are coming up to the top last week's burn bag uh was a guy by the name of John McIntyre who I knew as Bama and Bama was just playing crazy quit the legion well actually we kicked him out of the legion went over to another group, then left Ukraine, went to Turkey, and defected to Moscow. And I guess now he's hanging out, drinking vodka in a refrigerator with Edward Snowden. I don't know that for a fact, but I guess that's what all traders do. This week's burn bag is much more fascinating, far more fascinating. Whereas John McIntyre was just crazy, and he's Moscow's problem now. Thank you, go away, spasibo comrade. Uh, we, uh, this week's sperm bag is still a problem in Ukraine, and I think that she represents a, a grave threat to national security in Ukraine. Turns out a few years ago, an Australian television show called The Block, which is sort of like American Idol, only with house renovation, uh, had a person on who was bidding on these really expensive houses. This person seemed to come out of nowhere. They, her background was checked. Turns out that she had done a TED talk on cybersecurity. Claim she was the CEO of a cybersecurity company called Anakin Consulting. Uh, you know, uh, there's trouble right there with Disney trademarks. And was working for the United Nations in counterterrorism, cybersecurity, and national security, and was a multi multi millionaire. Uh, working with Apple Corporation. Well, she came on the TV show, uh, apparently charmed the owners, bid on the house, bid out the highest uh, realtors in Australia, and got a record sum for that TV show. Interestingly enough, two weeks later, the people from the program, well, they want their $4.28 million dollars that she bid in front of 10 million people in Australia, which is pretty big for a country with a 42 million person population. Turns out she didn't have any money because this person whose name was Emi's Fake, I'm not joking, because Misophony was apparently taken as a child's name, a Hungarian who had, who had gone to Australia from the United States via London, and apparently was an international con artist, which is a great story for those of you who saw the movie on Netflix, Inventing Anna, person who just fabricated their whole background and went around with the highest levels of society and conned money out of people. So apparently she had done this fraud and then immediately conducted a case of wire fraud against herself by manufacturing a fake wire bank transfer and claiming she had paid the $4.2 million and that house technically belonged to her. Before Australian authorities could do anything, she fled the country to the Portuguese island of Madeira and for a year did the same thing, was conning people at small time, rents, equipment, stealing watches and other things as con artists do, right? That's what con stands for, confidence artist. When the Australian television tracked her down there for an annual, where did she go? Turns out she fled Madeira and somehow ended up in the International Legion for the Defense of Ukraine, my outfit. In fact, I had known her and had been working with her for almost three months before someone slipped it to me two interesting items. One, in her first week when she was in Ukraine, after the Yavarov airstrike, she was arrested by Ukrainian uh, internal security on suspicion of espionage. 
They couldn't make that stick. She somehow got off and became the PR rep for the Legion, working with another shady character who was the press secretary for the Legion. Interesting fact, out of the thousands of people that have been in the International Legion, including myself, these are the only two people who took and received no combat training whatsoever. I mean, people who are in the army who only wear the uniform and never do anything. I didn't know anything about this until July when it came to me that she did a press conference in Kharkiv, an Australian journalist saw her and said, hey, aren't you the chick that conned the TV show The Block in Australia? Press conference over. Uh, and then Australian journalists flocked to uh, Kiev, took pictures of her while she was in uniform, uh, giving this press conference, and outed her as having escaped to Ukraine where there's no extradition treaty with Australia and is pretending to be fighting Russians because she's the PR rep. And of course, she has no combat experience, no combat training. And the one or two photographs she has of her holding a rifle were actually done in Rivna, our training base, about 12 hours from the battle zone, almost on, you know, uh, midway to Lviv. So interestingly enough, one of the things that I found while I was in Ukraine is that many of these people, these young people, they reinvent themselves. Now, I didn't have to reinvent myself. I've got a background. I've got a career. I've got stuff that I did, and I helped Ukraine to the best of my ability. I walked away from a six-figure job to help Ukraine. But what we found is there's an entire class of criminals, crusades, uh, I should say, criminals, crazies, and, uh, you know, these uh, characters who reinvent themselves. And she is just another one of them. The best part is she has been working actively. She's out of, uh, she's still in the Ukrainian army. And the only reason she hasn't been arrested, I have to assume, is that the Ukrainians are keeping her in some form of, you know, nearby detention. Because a news article cropped up again in the last few weeks with audio recordings of her saying she can't be clicked out of the Legion. She's blackmailing a Ukrainian general. As it turned out, they wanted to report me for desertion, and then Zenin told Ruslan, instructed Ruslan, gave orders to terminate my contract. My only love was that before this, I spoke to Zeus, and they couldn't touch me at this point. Yeah. And I told Zeus, if I'm not coming back to this thing, I'm going to go public on everything I know, and why I'm being removed. And I told him, this is not right against you, nothing personal against you, but I will go public. So I've been almost kicked out. People talking shit has consequences. Now, Malcolm, this show is supposed to be about espionage. Why do we care about this crazy who is a con artist? Because when you have things in your background, it's called kompromat. In Russian intelligence terms, compromising material. And if Russian intelligence hasn't already contacted her, then they are just waiting to contact her to see if she's going to be the next Bama who jumps on an airplane, flies to Red Square, and claims that she has all the secrets of Ukraine because she worked in land warfare headquarters. Absolutely disgraceful. She is without a doubt almost equal to Bama in terms of being burn bag of the week. But let me tell you, in my book, she has been burn bag of the last year because she has been conning people the entire time she was in Ukraine. But this blackmailing of the Ukrainian officer, of which we're going to post the link, we might even put up a clip of audio of her saying that she can get away with it because she's untouchable. Well, that's just not the way it works. The Ukrainians arrest people once they've figured out what you are and what you do. So, like Bama, she's someone else's problem now. She's not my problem. And I wouldn't be surprised if she was hanging out with Edward Snowden and Bama, uh, all sitting at the bar, drinking vodka, lamenting how horrible it was having to work a decent, honest life in the West. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like our YouTube channel and please subscribe to our Substack feed at malcolmnance.substack.com.